Thank you. I, I appreciate the uh, organizers of giving me the opportunity to tell you some of the things I've been thinking about recently. Uh, so the duality between n equal 4 super Yang Mills and uh, type 2b superstring theory in an ADS5 times S5 background geometry is certainly the most studied example of ADS-CFT duality and the one which most is known about. But it's clear that there's still much more that could be done uh, in studying this duality, and that could potentially be quite informative. So I've been thinking a little bit recently about the string theory side of the story. I have nothing to say about the gauge theory side. And so I'll just tell you what I've been do doing. So in the previous studies of the type 2b superstring in this background, uh, starting with the work of Mitsayev and Saitlin in 1998, a long time ago, uh, and, and the, I'm not going to give them lots of references here, but many, many people have contributed to this. And I just mentioned them because the first example. Anyway, what their approach to studying this was to uh, understand this background as a, as a coset space given by the global isometry group, which is a supergroup called PSU 2 comma 2 slash 4, and then modding out by the appropriate uh, subgroup, SO4 comma 1 times SO5. And this quotient space uh, is supposed to describe the, uh, the superspace geometry. And that's certainly correct, but it's not the only way to do things. And so I'm going to describe an alternative approach, uh, which is equivalent in the end, and, but I think may have certain advantages. And the, the main advantage that it'll have is that it'll allow us to keep more of the symmetries manifest at various stages. And I think that could be helpful. So what I will do instead is to consider uh, first just the Grassmann coordinates, uh, the odd coordinates of this superspace geometry, and to describe them based on the coset space where you divide out the entire bosonic subgroup, which is SU2 comma 2 times SU4. So that just leaves you the 32 fermionic directions of the supergeometry and describe them in terms of fermionic coordinates. And then afterwards, we'll add in the bosonic coordinates. And these bosonic coordinates, which is the 10-dimensional ADS5 times S5 geometry, will be described as a sub-manifold of the supergroup, I mean, excuse me, uh, uh, of the Lie group, SU2 comma 2 times SU4. So that's the idea. So, so let me just say how I describe a sphere in anti de Sitter space. So I describe a sphere in the same way you would teach uh, in high school how to do it, uh, as a sum of squares equal 1. And the unit radius anti de Sitter space is described in the same way with a couple of minus signs. And then you can easily write down the unit radius metric uh, for ADS5 times S5. And that's just given by the formula at the bottom here. Now, there are lots and lots of other ways of writing the, the metric for ADS5 and the metric for a 5-sphere. But I like this very simple formula because it exposes all of the symmetries. And any, any other way of writing it just makes it it's harder to see the symmetries. So I like to just leave it this way. Now, when you consider a string moving in this geometry, you take the coordinate z and y. Remember, z describes the of sphere and y describes the ADS. Uh, so we take them to be functions of the world sheet coordinates and we and use the pullback to define the world sheet metric G alpha beta is the induced metric on the world volume. And so the bosonic part of the superstring action at radius 4 would be just this uh, induced metric uh, coupled to an auxiliary metric uh, of, for the uh, world volume. And and then we put in, this was for unit radius. We put in the fact that this has radius r by putting in a factor of r squared. And so this is the bosonic part of the superstring story. And, uh, and then one uses ADS-CFT to realize that r squared over alpha prime is just related to what would be the Tuff parameter in the dual uh, yang mills gauge theory. So all this is extremely well known. I'm just reminding you of things that are well known. So OK, so proceed. So now, it'll be useful to describe things in terms of super matrices. My notation is a little bit different than what you'll find in the literature, but entirely equivalent. So a, a super matrix has uh, two bosonic blocks, A and D, 
and two fermionic blocks for the Grassmann odd pieces and the off diagonal blocks. And what and the, what people don't usually put in this funny phase that I've introduced here. They would just write B and C without this phase. But by introducing it, I can treat the upper and lower box, the B and C blocks, in a more symmetrical way. So, uh, so it's just a matter of taste whether you choose to put in this phase or not. It's a question of redefining the B and C accordingly. When you define things this way, the appropriate thing to call the adjoints, which isn't the usual adjoint, it's well, the, for the bosonic blocks, it's the usual adjoint. And for the fermionic blocks, this is the adjoint. Uh, and so the, re the reason this is a good definition of the superadjoint is that with this definition, you have this nice looking formula down at the bottom here, uh, which properly takes account of the fact that B and C are Grassmann odd. So a unitary supermatrix or, uh, is then just one for which MM dagger is the unit matrix with this definition of the adjoint. And an anti-Hermitian supermatrix is one for which M plus M dagger is 0 with this definition of the supermatrix. And the supertrace is defined by the usual formulas as the difference of the traces of the bosonic blocks. And the advantage of this definition of the supertrace is that you get the usual cyclic uh, formula uh, for, for moving things around. So the, the, so the PSU 2 comma 2 algebra has one additional subtlety, which is very well known. And, th and that is it's convenient to start with the group which has an extra U1 factor. So the, the P has to do with the removal of a U1. And so the, the supergroup uh, with, has the, with this, the super algebra for SU 2 comma 2 slash 4 has the generators have vanishing super trace, but the A and D blocks don't have vanishing trace themselves. They have equal traces. And, and so the way one, d one wants to get rid of those traces and the way you do that is by making an equivalence uh, between supermatrices that differ just by a multiple of the, uh, of the identity matrix. And, and that, when you mod out by that, that gives you the, this PSU thing. So that's also well known. So now I'll tell you something which is very simple and as far as I know, I haven't found elsewhere in the literature. So even though it's simple, I well, if, if I'm wrong that it's not known, someone will tell me. And I, I would be anxious to learn that. Uh, so what I'm going to do is to describe the, 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 the fermionic coordinates theta, the Grassmann coordinates, uh, at, at, by a 4 by 4 matrix, and, uh, which is quite natural because we're going to want them to be bifundamental under the bosonic uh, groups, SU4 and SU2, 2. And so we use these matrices. Of course, in the flat space limit, in the work I did with Michael a long time ago, uh, we used 32 component Majorana vial spinners uh, to describe them. But uh, in this problem, it's more convenient to use these 4 by 4 matrices. Well, one of the curious facts is when you use matrices rather than spinners, you never need to invoke Fürth's identities in any of the uh, derivations where even in flat space, we did have to use them. And they can get tricky sometimes. So, 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 here, so here's the punchline down here is that if we ask how these things should transform under an arbitrary element of the PSU 2 comma 2 slash 4 algebra, uh, we, we get the following terms. So the multiplication by omega on the left is meant to represent an infinitesimal SU4 transformation. So this, this omega is some anti-Hermitian 4 by 4 matrix. Uh, and then when we multiply from the right with another Similar looking matrix, that's supposed to be an infinitesimal SU2, comma 2 transformation. And then we have the uh, fermionic transformations. In flat space, you would just have the epsilon term. But now when I want to describe the, this, this curved geometry, we add this term quadratic in thetas that we don't see in flat space. This is all for unit radius spheres. Everything's dimensionless. If I put in parameter, if I put in a radius, this last term would be divided by the radius. Uh, but uh, I set that equal to 1. So this would vanish in the large radius limit. Uh, the interesting fact is that this formula, if you, just iter if you just commute two of these transformations, completely closes on this algebra for precisely this formula. And that's what I haven't seen elsewhere in the literature. It's a very simple fact. The mathematics is very reminiscent of the volkov akulov goldstein uh, This is very similar math. So what I'm going to do now is to construct supermatrix that's just 
depends on theta. We're not talking about bosonic coordinates at all. And it's going to be an element of the group PSU 2 comma 2 slash 4. And, and it's going to be written in the following form. So, so the, these i's here are just unit matrices, 4 by 4 unit matrices. And then we, have, we put our theta and theta dagger on the off diagonal blocks with this funny phase that I introduced earlier. And then we have something with just uh, diagonal blocks over here. And we require that this is an element of this group, which means I need that gamma gamma dagger is equal to the unit matrix. And it turns out that you can solve this by, for appropriate choices of the things I called F and F tilde. And th so these, these are for each, for, this is a four by four matrix that has to do with the SU4. This is a four by four matrix that has to do with the SU2 comma two. And, and the formulas are extremely simple. It's just a square root of one plus. So U here is a four by four matrix that just has SU4 indices, because when I multiply in this order, and when you multiply in the other order, it just has SU2 comma two indices on the outside. So, so, this is, so this matrix here, which you can expand out, this is actually a polynomial, because after the 16th power, everything vanishes. Uh, so, so if you choose these values for these functions, f, then this thing uh, belongs to the group. So beca because of this structure, all the formulas that I will write will have complete, all the full dependence on the theta coordinates will be explicit everywhere. And it will just depend on this, use this very simple function, square root of 1 plus x. So then you can add, so I've already told you how theta transforms under a supersymmetry, infinitesimal supersymmetry transformation. So we can ask how this supermatrix gamma transforms. And it turns out that you can, you can describe its transformation just by some linear transformation of, by multiplication on the right. And then some induced local SU4 times SU2 two transformation from the left. And so you can see here that you're dealing with something that's representing a coset because you see the, the global symmetry acting from one side and the local symmetry acting from the other side. And, the, and these induced SU4 and SU2 transformations are completely explicit in terms of these functions f and f tilde that I uh, introduced in the previous uh, transparency. So it's the natural interpretation is that theta and gamma just describe this coset spaces, which is what I promised in the beginning. Now, given this gamma, you can define a connection, uh, gamma inverse d gamma. So it's a super matrix of one forms. And uh, so, the, so here's my super matrix of one form. So this defines what I'm calling k, and k tilde and psi and psi dagger. And since I told you what gamma is, this is completely explicit. And, uh, and because, it, because this has this pure gauge form, it's, it's a flat connection, dA plus a wedge a is equal to zero. And this thing is made entirely out of theta. I still haven't brought in the bosonic coordinates yet. Under a supersymmetry transformation, this thing transforms this way. So it just looks like a gauge field for local SU2 comma 2 times SU4. Now we want to add the bosonic coordinates. I want to describe them also by four by four matrices. So, but earlier I introduced a unit matrix, which I called Z hat. So it has six, six components for this five sphere. So, so, the, so this, this is a six vector whose sum of squares is equal to one. And if I just write it as three complex numbers, U, V, and W, whose squares add up to one, so that's, that's our sphere. And you consider this anti-symmetric matrix, uh, then th this matrix you can show by explicit calculation, well, it's obvious it's anti-symmetric, but it's also unitary and has unit determinant. So this is an element of SU4. So what this formula does is it tells you how to embed a five sphere into the group manifold SU4. So it's a co-dimension 10 map of S5 into SU4. This matrix has appeared previously in the literature. I just noticed that very recently. So the only purpose in writing out that matrix explicitly was to demonstrate it beyond a doubt that it exists with all these properties. I would never need to use the explicit formula. Everything is done more abstractly. But uh, 
you don't want to do abstract manipulations with something that doesn't exist. So, so that's why I went to that trouble. Uh, so this matrix Z, as I said, is a co-dimension 10 map from S5 and SU4. And similarly, I define a matrix Y, which maps ADS5 into SU2, comma 2, a very similar looking expression. And you can ask how, well, and then you can ask how these things should transform. And they, we require that they transform just by these induced local trans, SU2, comma 2, and SU4 transformations we defined earlier. And so they, we require that they transform this way. So those are, the, uh, so that's what's consistent with the anti-symmetry of these matrices. And then we can define some connections which now do involve the bosonic coordinates as well as the fermionic coordinates. So this, this K and K tilde, which appear in this formula, were, remember earlier when I was just doing fermions, I had a matrix gamma inverse D gamma, which I called A, and the diagonal blocks of that matrix were called K and K tilde. So that's what this K and K tilde are. And now we're combining them with these bosonic matrices, Z and Y, that I just defined in this way. And that gives us some one forms, omega and omega tilde. And these things are constructed such that they transform under supersymmetry in, the, in, the, in this natural fashion, as shown here. So, so I don't even talk about the SU22 and SU4 transformations, because they're all completely manifest in the formalism. Everything trans has mani manifest symmetries there. It's only the supersymmetry that we have to be careful to keep track of. So, so this is how these matrices, these one forms, transform under the supersymmetry transformations. And that makes it completely evident that trace of omega squared and trace of omega tilde squared are invariant under this entire supergroup. Uh, because obviously, in fact, the two terms are separately invariant under the entire supergroup. But one requires this particular combination to get the right bosonic limit, the right bosonic truncation. At least that's, well, that's one of many arguments. Local kappa symmetry, all sorts of other reasons would give you the same conclusion. Now, in flat space, the fermions were divided up into uh, two Majorana-Weyl spinners of this same chirality. But here, this matrix theta uh, transforms this fork four bar under uh, the, the SU2 comma 2 times SU4. And so, the question is, can we divide this up into two pieces that we would call Majorana vial? And this would just be the uh, thing that was vial, but not uh, Majorana. Uh, and to do this, uh, it turns out we have to introduce an involution, which is just a, kind of a deformation of complex conjugation, uh, which is, which is the, uh, it becomes obvious when you think about how things transform under these groups. This is really the only thing you can write down that transforms in the right way under SU2, comma 2 times SU4. And, this is, and because of the uh, unitarity of these matrices Z and Y, this is an involution. If you do it twice, you get back to where you started. And so this is kind of a deformation of complex conjugation. And in the limit of, of flat space, this reduces to the standard way that you would uh, define a Meyer on a vial spinner. And so we can take an arbitrary uh, one form, like the one I had psi, or we could do it for theta as well. And you can write it as a sum of two pieces, psi 1 plus i psi 2. And, and then psi prime would be the psi 1 minus i psi 2, where psi 1 and psi 2 are what I'm calling Majorana vial matrices. And uh, Majorana vial matrices are the ones that just satisfy uh, this equation here, uh, where, where, where you're using this deformation of complex conjugation. So now what I do is to define three different super matrix one forms. So I've introduced omega and omega tilde before. You remember we had trace of omega squared minus trace of omega tilde squared in the metric. So it's obvious I'm going to have a super matrix that looks like this. And, uh, and, then, these, and then I had psi uh, was, was the one form that appeared uh, in that uh, gamma inverse d gamma. It appeared in the off-diagonal blocks. So this, in fact, these were the off-diagonal pieces of that thing I called A previously. And then, and then we have these uh, transformations that I just showed you, which would give you the primed versions of these things. So I define these three super matrices. 
And each of these things under supersymmetry transforms in this way. So that's, so they're the natural things to consider. But I don't really want, what I want more are things that transform linearly under this entire super algebra. And for that, we, we use these matrices gamma, which allow you to, remember they, on one side showed the local symmetry and on the other side showed the global symmetry. So just like when you're dealing with Firbines, you can use them to convert from one kind of index to the other. So I define three other currents, which are just these unitary uh, transformations of, of these three A's I just defined. And these matrices would just transform in this way, where lambda is this supermatrix. So these three currents uh, transform linearly into the superalgebra in the obvious natural way. And, uh, and so one expects that the superstring super string should be formulated in terms of these three currents, uh, th these three one forms. And, uh, and that's indeed the case. The formulas for these things are completely explicit. You can construct what we call, might call more Cartan equations by taking exterior derivatives of each of them. You get some complicated looking formulas, although they can be recombined just by saying that these two complex combinations are, give you flat connections, and, and 2J2 is a flat connection. So that's one way of a mnemonic for remembering these more complicated formulas. Now, the superstring action has a Wesumino term in it. Uh, so, the, uh, so usually one thinks of that as some closed three form, or, which in this case is actually an exact three form, so it can be written as the exterior derivative of a two form. And, and since it's exact in this particular case, we can skip the discussion of H3 and go directly to find, finding a two form uh, B2. And so, the obvious candidates for invariant two forms are just taking these one forms I just showed you, taking wedge projects of them in a supertrace. And they, these things, are, such as the object, is certainly invariant under the entire supergroup. But it turns out, oh, the, first of all, all these, these things are anti-symmetric. Remember, we had this cyclicity inside the trace, but these are one forms, so you get an extra minus sign when you do the cyclic maneuver. So that's why you get the minus sign in this formula. And so, and, so, and, of the, and so of the three remaining possibilities, only one of them is non-zero, and that's J2 wedge J3 in my notation. And so one expects the Wesumino term to be proportional to this. And, uh, and the correct coefficient is, de is determined up to a sign by requiring local kappa symmetry. So the world sheet action uh, of the superstring then is, so here, here's the induced metric I showed you earlier, which can be written in terms of this current, I, or one form I call J1. It's this. And so that, so that gives you this term uh, in the action. And then the Wesumino term is what I just showed you. And then this is the correct coefficient uh, that's required uh, to get the kappa symmetry. And now by making an infinitesimal PSU 2 comma 2 slash 4 transformation, you can read off the Noether current associated with this thing. And the Noether current turns out to be just J1 plus the uh, Hodge dual of J3. So, uh, so J, the J1 piece comes from this term. The J3 term comes from here. And, th and so the conservation of this current gives you an equation of motion, uh, which, which is shown here. So that's, that's just the statement that this Noether current is conserved. Now, that's not the only equation of motion in this problem. Uh, and to find additional equations of motion, and also to study kappa symmetry, uh, we consider varying the, the Grassmann coordinate theta. And so remember, A only dependent on the thetas. And so it varies under, a infinite, under an arbitrary theta transformation. It varies in this way, where I've defined rho by this formula, and m, so these script m's by the formulas at the bottom. So all these, remember, f was just the square root of 1 plus theta, theta dagger business. And uh, uh, so these are completely explicit formulas just involving the thetas for an arbitrary variation of that a thing. And now we also, so that tells you how the thetas transform. And, and then the, the, and the require z and y to transform at the same time in this way. And then one can ask, how does the action transform uh, under these transformations? And it turns out that the, uh, the first term, the, the ge geometric term, the Nambu-Goto term, if you will, uh, 
gives you this variation, and the, uh, the West Amino term gives you this variation, where this matrix row, the R that appeared in the previous thing, it is just these rows, which we remember were involved delta theta. And from this, one can read off additional equations of motion, uh, which are shown here. And this one is actually equivalent to this one, although that may not be obvious without explanation that I don't have time to give. And then I can reproduce uh, the proof of integrability that was given by Bina Polchinski and Royban back in 2003. Uh, and uh, the, what they did was to construct a uh, one form uh, with that is flat and depends on a spectral parameter, uh, uh, which uh, they call lambda, which is not to be confused with the Atuf parameter. And, and this is exactly the, so what I find is an exact agreement with what they found. So, so, carry, so I'd use theta variation to get these additional equations of motion, but there are certain theta variations which don't give equations of motion. They just leave the thing invariant. And those are the kappa symmetry transformations. And I don't have time to explain that, so you'll have to read my forthcoming paper to find out how that works. So let me jump right to the conclusion. So, so far, the main achievement of this work is to just reproduce well-known results. But I think the formulism that I've described has some attractive features that are not shared by previous ones. The complete theta dependence of all quantities is described by simple analytic expressions. All formulas have manifest SU4 times SU2 to symmetry, and many have manifest TSU22 slash 4 symmetry. So the utility of this formalism for obtaining new results remains to be demonstrated. I haven't gotten any yet. I haven't really had time. I just got to this point very recently. Uh, and so there, there are two main directions that I would hope to explore in the future. One is to derive new facts about this theory, and the second is to formulate or else reformulate other theories in a similar way. So uh, thank you for your attention. Fermionic matrix and its transformations appeared in a paper I wrote, and then with Cormoran. So it's called new limit of ADS5 times S5. Stream. So the formula for delta theta? The, 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 the purely fermionic S, the, and its transformations under PSU224. Oh, OK. Is well, I, I'd like that. If you can give me that reference yeah. or email it to me or yeah, something. Yeah, the later I'd stuff. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Any other questions? <laughs> Let's thank John again.